Hey guys, it's Mei Mei. And I don't know if you watch our Crafter After shows that we film on, well, we do live on Thursday afternoons, but in that show, we have a segment called Across the Miles where people like you that make cards and things, our viewers, send us cards and different things that you make. And it's really fun. We can share them with our viewers and we hang them on our wall that is our Across the Miles wall. Well, my friend Noka made me a Get Well Soon card, which I appreciate so much. It was so cute. And she sent in the envelope this little easel for cards. Now, I've already hung her card, so I'm just going to show you how the easel works with a different card. So here's one I have in my stash. And look at this. It just holds your little greeting card, and it folds flat to go in the envelope with your card just like this. So I thought I would show you how to make this one, but... While I was at it, I thought I'd show you how to make two more as well. So we're going to start with this guy, and I have not talked to Naoka at this point. I had to go ahead and film. I did send her a message, but I didn't hear back. So I hope I say correctly, but I think I can tell how she did it. I'm not sure. So I'm going to do my version of it, and I hope it's close to what Naoka did, but you can kind of get the same thing. Okay. I did go away from her measurement slightly, and I'll tell you why. I thought it'd be cool if we could get four easels out of one piece of cardstock. So that way we save cardstock and we could kind of make these ahead of time. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this piece of cardstock. Now, here's one thing I will tell you. Naoka's is much thicker than what I'm using. Matter of fact, I think this is watercolor paper or a mixed media cardstock. I could, I mean, I think that, I think it's a mixed media or a cover stock. It's real sturdy. Mine's not going to be that sturdy. I'm using, um, this might be 80 pound, maybe. I don't know, but it works. I've already tested it, so it works. All right, so I'm gonna take this piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. I'm gonna cut it in half at four and a quarter, just the same size we're gonna do an A2 size card, okay? So four and a quarter and then five and a half. So I'm gonna get four from one cardstock, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to make three easels with this. So I'm gonna use three pieces of this that are all different, but every one starts with the same measurement, an A2 size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay. So then I'm going to take one of these guys to make the easel that, um, Naoka sent to me and I'm going to go to my scoreboard and I'm going to score it in half. So this is a five and a half piece. I'm going to score it on the five and a half inch side at two and three quarters. That's the middle. Okay. So just score that just like that. And then I'm going to fold it in half. So that's how I'm going to start. I'm going to butt this up against here. So I get a nice flat, even fold just like so, and I'm gonna crease it. A good sturdy crease is gonna matter because you want this to stand up, so a nice crisp crease. Now, from what I can tell, again, I have not heard from Naoka, but from what I can tell, she freehanded this shape. Now, she might have used something to be her guide, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do on this little sheet, this is my opening, okay? This is my fold. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make the little foot you see how she has that little foot right there? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in and make a little foot shape, something like that. I'm just sketching this in really sketchy. Let me zoom you in, that'll be better. So I'm just sketching this in really sketchy, right? Then you can see how this kind of S shape, all right? I'm gonna come in like this and just make myself a little S shape. This does not have to be perfect, and you'll see why in a second. There's my little S shape. And then from this top corner, I'm going to bring that S shape around again. Do not worry if you don't know how to draw. Do not worry, okay? You're basically drawing an S with a little foot, okay? Now, you can sketch this, like you can do it like this and make the little sketchy marks, and then when you get it where you want it, you can pencil it in solid, and you'll know. This is good enough for me, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do from here. I'm going to cut this out with my scissors, okay? So I'm not worried about the pencil mark because what I'm making is a template for myself. This one is gonna be my guide for the rest of my easels that I will make, all right? So this is gonna be one of those projects, which I love, by the way. These are those projects that you'll make up several, okay? And then keep them on hand because every time you send out a card, you can send an easel to go with it. So I'm saying, make yourself a template, much like this one, and use it over and over and over again. Have yourself a stash for it. Have yourself a spot on your desk to keep your easel template. You only have to build it once. And I'm not even cutting exactly on that line. I'm just cutting close to it, and I'm just trying to be nice and smooth, 
All right, so this piece I don't need. You can use it for scrap. So this becomes my easel. Now again, this is my template, so I don't really care that it's still got pencil marks on it. This is my easel. I also wanna show you this. Mine is a little different size. Remember I told you I was changing my measurement up slightly, but the reason is I wanted to get four from one piece of cardstock, and this was just an easy way for me to do it in my head. Now Nyoka went in and used a die cut and cut out this little frilly shape, which is super cute. It makes it nice and frilly and cute looking, and you are welcome to do that. I'm actually not even gonna do that because here's what I was thinking. We could stamp on here, not do anything. We can do this with designer paper. We don't have to do anything fancy. Now, the one thing I think I need to pay attention to, and you'll want to too, I think I got this jutted out a little too far. Notice how hers doesn't jut out quite so far. So I'm just gonna trim this down a little bit. Here's the thing. You can do your template and then test it. And once you have it built, you've got it built. You know, once you've got it right where cards are standing up, see, I think it just needed a little bit of that to go away. Just a little too much at the front. So I'm gonna trim that away. Then I'll test it with a card and see. Just felt a little heavy there on the front. But again, once you have this right, then you've got it right and you can use it over and over. So I'm gonna stand my easel up like this and bring this little card over and sit it in. And it's really cute and it holds your little card up. Isn't that precious? So that's the thing. And let me, um, how can I do this where you can see it? Let's do it like this. See how that little piece pushes on the card? That's why if you have it too forward, then your card won't won't rest. Does that make sense? You need to have it where the card will rest and that works really well. So that would be my template from here on out and that is a little easel that I can then put to the back of the card in the envelope and when the person gets it they'll have a little easel stand, right? Super cute. Awesome idea, Nyoka. Thank you so much. So after she sent me that, I started looking online at some other easels people have done and I thought, if freehanding is not your thing, okay, if this is not your thing, freehanding, I'm gonna show you two ways to get easels by measuring. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit for this one so you can see my ruler and stuff like that. So the first one uses the same size cardstock. Again, we're still using one of those pieces we cut. I'm gonna fold this in half. I'm not even gonna score it. I'm just gonna fold it in half for now, and then I'll crease it with my bone folder nice and snug. Now for this one, I'm gonna use my ruler and make some marks, okay? Again, I'm making a template. Once I build this once, I won't have to do this again. I'll trace further future ones with it, okay? So I've got my opening on this side, my fold on this side. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna run from corner to corner across this piece and make a pencil mark. So this is gonna get me my angle for my easel, okay? Then what I wanna do is I wanna measure up from this corner three quarters of an inch, and I wanna measure in three quarters of an inch. You'll see why in just a second, but that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take my ruler, and I'm gonna lay it here at the bottom, and I'm just gonna measure in three quarters of an inch and make a mark. Again, you only have to do this one time. After you build this, you've got it, and you'll ever have to do this again. And then make myself a mark at three quarters, okay? Then I'm gonna take those two marks, and I'm gonna draw a line between the two, just like this. I'm basically building for myself a little foot down here, okay? So I've got these crossover lines. Now what I wanna do is I wanna cut this section away. So I'm gonna come here to the bottom and I'm gonna snip to the crossover where those pencil marks cross. I'm gonna snip that. That becomes the foot of my easel, okay? Then I'm just gonna cut straight up on this line. These are not the right scissors for the job. I should have used my big ones, but these will work for now. Um, this, again, is just my template. I have to do the measurement once and then put this with my easel template, and it gives me another option when I'm wanting to send out cards. Oh, I was already through. All right, so here's this. Not going to worry about the pencil marks because it's my template, and then I will open this up and look at this. Let me bring my card back over. It, too, is a little... Oh, Let's try it again. It too is a little stand easel. There we go. I did that a little too fast. Let's do it again. Let me bring this to the camera good, like so. And then you sit your little card down and you have a little easel. So there you go. So the sturdier the cardstock, the better your easel is. Okay, again, this is not very sturdy cardstock I'm using. I would use something much thicker, but I just wanted to make myself a template. So now I have it, right? So that's two different easels. The little pretty swirly one, the little point up straight and down one. And now I wanna show you something a little more difficult. And it's kind of funny because I've always wanted to do this and I've, I just never have done it. So are you familiar with those kind of calendar things we get that have this piece on the back that you fold and you bring this piece down and you lock it into place like this and you end up with an easel that looks like this? Have you guys, I know you guys have seen this and then this stands up on your card. 
So I thought if I'm gonna bring you some easels, I wanna try a couple. So I did this in the craft room, just kind of playing around and looking at photos online of what these were made like. So I'm gonna show you how I got this. It's a few more steps, takes a little more work, but I think you'll like it. So let's make this one too. All right, I'm gonna zoom you out a little further. Again, we're starting with the same size piece of cardstock. This is four and a quarter by five and a half. So you can still get four of these from one piece of cardstock. Now, All right, so I'm gonna put this into my scoreboard and here's where we have to make a few extra marks, okay? First, we're gonna score it at one and three quarters and two and a half. That's where we're gonna score it. That's gonna get us this middle piece right here, okay? While we have it here, we're gonna make some marks. We're gonna mark in an inch from the edge okay, and an inch from this edge, which is three and a quarter. So I'm just making some pencil marks, okay? Then I'm gonna turn this guy sideways and I'm gonna make a pencil mark a quarter of an inch up from the bottom on this side and a quarter of an inch up from the bottom here, which is one, two, let's see, which is two lines up. Now I need to make one more score line. I'm gonna put this into my um, scoreboard with the bottom, which is where we have the quarter inch, with the bottom, I'm gonna score it at two and a half. So I'm gonna run over this one more time. A one inch pencil mark, a one and three quarter inch score mark, a two and a half inch score mark, and then a three and a quarter pencil mark, okay? Turn it in your scoreboard with your marks at the top, and you're gonna have a quarter inch um, mark and a two and a half inch score mark. So that gets you what you need. Now let's go to our trimmer because we're gonna trim some stuff away. So what I want you to do is we're gonna start with the bottom. There's a reason. If you start with the top, you're gonna cut your mark away, so start at the bottom. We're gonna take that pencil mark in that first score line, and we're gonna cut an angle to it. This little angle is what's gonna give your card the ease to lay back a little bit to help it stand. So now from the second score mark to my second pencil mark, I'm gonna trim that. This does not have to be like perfectly, perfectly exact. It just has to be pretty close. And I didn't get that one close at all. Let's try trimming that again. All right, so I got my little angle cut in. And again, this can be a template. So once you get this cut, you can trace these marks on your next piece and not have to do all that measuring. All right, so from here, I'm gonna take this pencil mark and this edge, and I'm gonna cut that angle just like so. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Point to pencil mark and cut that angle. Now you can see what we've got. This is what's gonna lay on the back of our greeting card, but we need to make the little holder piece right here. And let me show you how I did that. So I went into my stash and looked through my dies, and I found one that is, how big is this die? Let's see, that would help to know. This one is right at two, it's about a two inch circle. If I go from cut line to cut line, it's a two inch circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eyeball center this and I want it to be slightly higher than that middle score line, just slightly above it. Cause I want kind of an oval shape, not really an oval, but I want kind of a bigger shape at the top. So I've just slightly moved it up and this is gonna be where I cut. So for you to see it on camera, I'm gonna put some tape there just so you can see it. So I'm gonna take this tape and where my score line is, I'm just gonna run this tape right along that score line, just really so you can see that on camera, okay? So we're gonna do a partial die cut here. So I'm gonna take this guy to my cuddle bug. I've already got my plates laid out here for me. So bring the cuddle bug over. And I'm going to take my, I'm using my A plate, my magnetic plate, and my B plate, okay? I'm gonna take this little guy, and at the end of this plate, I'm gonna run that tape line even with the end of my cutting platform. The reason is I wanna do a partial cut. I'm trying to do this totally backwards. I should have turned that different, but anyway. So line this up so that part of your die is hanging off the free edge. That means it won't cut there. It's only gonna cut at the part that's underneath the plates. So now I can line this up, put it into my cuddle bug, and I'll show you what I mean when I get it steady. Okay, so hanging off, we got the die hanging off right to that middle score line. And so this circle is gonna cut partially across. Ooh, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, there we go. Move this guy aside and I'll show you what we got. Let's untape it from my plates there. Peel this off. Now you can see what I've got here is like this half circle at that score line that I can then fold down. 
See that? So it kind of makes like a cutout. All right, before I fold this all up and make a couple of more snips, I'm gonna go ahead and add my adhesive. So I'm just gonna use some sticky tape. And part of the reason for that is, I think if I wanna make up a bunch of these, I can go ahead and put my sticky tape on and then just have them ready to stick onto cards. So you don't wanna put your adhesive above this cut line. You wanna put your, I mean, you don't wanna put it inside this cut line. You wanna put it above the cut line. So I'm gonna run some adhesive on one side right next to my score mark, okay? Then I'm just gonna cut that with an acrylic block like that, all right? And then I'm gonna do the next side next to it. And again, this can just now sit in the craft room until I need it to put onto a card. So there's the top section. And then I'm gonna come underneath the fold line and put adhesive here. So these are one of those things you could like just sit in the craft room, like maybe you don't have anybody to make a card for today, but you know you will, you know, soon. And you're like, you know what? I think I'll just go make some easels today and be prepared for when I go mail out my cards. All right, so now I've got tape only in that center section of the score line because the rest is going to be the leg. Remember, this is all that gets stuck down. All right, now what we want to do is we want to make a couple of little more snips, and these you need to do with your scissors. The first ones you're gonna make is this middle piece has got score lines here and here because we scored all the way down. You're gonna snip a little more, just a little more than halfway on those score lines on each side. Just like that, just a little more than halfway, okay? Then what I need you to do is right here on this score line, you need to cut from the edge of the circle to the first score line right here. So I'm gonna take my snips and I'm just gonna snip across just like that. So I've made this little flat piece. I really just released it from this wall, okay? Let's do it on the other side too. So from the edge of my die cut circle to that score line, I'm gonna snip this across. It's a little more detailed. It takes a little bit more, but that's it. Now this easel is done and ready for a card. So let me find one we get. Oh, let's put it on the little snowman card. So here's our little snowman, okay? So let me peel the backer off. Where's my pokey tool? Would you believe my pokey tool was put away? Hmm, I never find anything when it's where it's supposed to be. All right, so I'm peeling the little backers off the adhesive. And remember, there's no adhesive on this little circle piece, this half circle piece. We need it to be free. All right, and then I'm going to adhere this to my card. Now, here's what I meant by if your card is not perfectly the right size for this, you might have to trim it down, but I'll do that in a second. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. All right, so I'm gonna line this up at the bottom and the top just like so. And you know what's funny? I just remembered. I cut this card down so it's not A2. Hold on just a second. I want to check this, see if I've messed myself up. Yep, this is a four inch card. I forgot that I did that. So four by five and a half, I cut it down a quarter of an inch. So I've got a little hang off, but you won't have any hang off on a regular card. I'll show you. This one is cut correctly. So see, it goes right to the edge. So you won't have any hang off. Sorry about that. I forgot that I did that on this card. All right, so here's what you do. When the recipient gets it, they'll fold one leg back, fold the other leg back, and then this little middle piece folds down. You've seen these before. You get them like those little calendars and those greeting cards that we get, just like that. And look, you have an automatic stand on the back and it's attached. And again, this will still work for me. I might just trim a little bit of this off so that it doesn't hang over the edge and I can still send this card. But how cute is that? It's not for everybody. This is not an easel that everybody's gonna wanna make. But if you do want one that looks something like this, now you know how to do it, right? I think it looks super cool. And I love how it, you know, I love how we can close this down, put this guy in an envelope. Of course you won't have these. Watch, let me show you what I would do. Seriously, y'all said y'all like when you see my mistakes. Watch this. Snip. This is just how I am. I, I just don't stress about it. This card looks just as good as it did before, right? Little legs are gone and it will still stand. Do you want me to test it and make sure? Let's lift this guy up and we still stand up just fine and no one's the wiser, right? So how cool, right? I love that one. So there's that easel and then of course we have this easel and our little swirly easel. So I hope you guys enjoyed those. Thanks so much to Naoka for inspiring this. And you guys asked like crazy, please show us how to do that. So I hope that answers your questions and helps you in your card making. All right, guys, until tomorrow morning when I see you for our Hide His Word in My Heart video, that is today. If you make these easels, I want to see them. Anytime I make a project that inspires you to create something similar, I want to see it on my Facebook group called 
May May made it and so did I. That's what we created that group for and I love seeing you guys take my ideas and show me what you do with them on in photos. You can also share your projects on our customer gallery on our website at maymaymadeit.com under the more tab. So click there and you'll find our customer um, gallery. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.